obviously uh, not our best effort. Uh, came down to lack of execution, truly. Uh, offense and defense weren't good enough. Uh, no excuses, no explanations. Special teams had some bright spots, but uh, offensively, obviously, we couldn't really get anything going, especially in the first half. Um, we've got to do a better job putting our guys in positions to make plays. Uh, it starts with me. And then defensively, we've got to find a way to, to make stops, right? We've got to secure tackles better. Uh, we had the one takeaway, and then obviously uh, the fumble at the end of the game uh, by the offense, but uh, not good enough. The, the execution wasn't there, and we absolutely have to be better. Brian, how much of it was obviously Mississippi State being a much more physical team versus maybe your mistakes in your opinion? Yeah, look, give credit where credit's due. Mississippi State's a fantastic team. Uh, they, their schemes, their, 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 their coaches, their players, they did a fantastic job. Let's give credit where it's due. But uh, we made a lot of mistakes. And, uh, you know, whether there's some penalties, they were untimely, um, which they always are. But uh, all, uh, just really, you know, going out there and being able to, to execute a game plan. And, you know, we got to peel back the curtain and say, okay, was the game plan exactly what we need it to be? Um, was it a, a, a lack of being able to go out there and do what we needed to do in order to be successful. Um, you know, we had some drops at some key times uh, and nor weren't able to sustain drives that way. Um, you know, we had some missed tackles, you know, some shots over the head um, where they made some big plays. And, you know, when you put all that together, it was a recipe for a bad football game. Yeah, you know, I mean, look, you can go in and, and yell and scream, but, you know, we got we got good players. And so you tell them to take a deep breath, and, you know, we get together as an offensive staff and say, okay, what can we do? Where can we put our guys in better situations? Um, I had to find a way to win some one-on-ones because they were blitzing and, and playing some um, man-type coverages where we had to find ways to get guys open, and the throws had to be uh, pretty darn accurate in order to make the completions. And... Um, a lack of thereof, but you know, you, you sit there and talk with you know Coach Cramsey, who I have full faith in. He did a, a, a nice job, but we've got to be able to, you know, at halftime you're sitting there saying, okay, what can we do to get you know, get some of these guys loose? And you know, um, I never doubt the fight of our guys or the belief. And that was the one thing you know I said just in the locker room again. You know, that one game won't define us. Uh, obviously, very very disappointed, uh, very frustrated, but we know what lies ahead. We got a quick turnaround, and we got Navy. And that, that game is as important as uh, any game this as we go, right? It's the next one, but it's a conference game. And our guys got to hold their heads up. But even when you bring the guys up on the, the sideline of the, the fourth quarter, you can look and, and every single one of those guys still believes. Um, they, they're bought in, but we just got to find a way to execute better. But halftime, yeah, hey, how do we develop a plan? You know, let's look at what we had. Let's look at what we practiced and find a way to go out there and execute at a higher level. But it's frustrating the first half as you've had as a head coach? Yes, absolutely. It's about as frustrating as a, as a first half I've had in a long, long time coaching this game. Defensively, um, I mean, you talk, I mean, you were talking about both sides, but we need to look at like what our plans were. How much defensively was just missing tackles, or was it, as you kind of alluded to, maybe the plan wasn't necessarily exactly as you Yeah, I think it. Yeah, I think it was a combination, you know, and a lot of times we'll get back and, you know, watch all the film and say, okay, what was it? And, you know, that's always one of those things of the first game. Uh, you look and say, okay, did we put our guys in the best position? Clearly we had too many missed tackles. And, you know, we harped on that as that needed to be a key to win the game. And um, you could go out there and see it, right? We'd have a guy that would be there on a bubble screen that would make the tackle. that could have been a two-yard gain instead of turned into a seven-yard gain. And, you know, credit to Mississippi State, they just methodically marched down the field time after time after time and then would find a, a way in the red zone, you know, maybe to make a, a, a great throw and catch by a receiver and the quarterback. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a combination of everything, right? You know, uh, uh, Coach, uh, you know, Matt Scott did a nice job putting together a formulating game plan, but we got to see was it the, the best for that situation, right? Now we know that. The game plan will be completely different uh, in this ec upcoming week, and uh, but that's one of those things we got to learn. You know, the players got to learn, the coaches got to learn. We got to find a way to move forward, and correct these mistakes. Coach, how important was it for the uh, confidence of the team as a whole to, to play better in the second half, move the ball, put up some points, you know, get some stops? Yeah, look, I'm not about moral victories by any stretch of the imagination. It wasn't good enough. Um, 
but what was important to me was just to see the guys' eyes. And I, I, I know it sounds like coach speak, um, but the fact that th these young men continue to fight and believe um, and, and realize that we're on the right track. Um, obviously, we didn't get going the right way fast enough, um, and we've got to do a better job with it. Any sort of future updates on Pounders and Tyler Murray? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. You know, it's um, obviously both were pulled and, um, and weren't able to come back in the game. And we'll hopefully, we'll have a, a prognosis maybe tomorrow. Same with Sincere. I think you saw him leave the game as well. Yep, and same with him as well. Yep, we got a little chipped up. Um, obviously, you know, like I've said all along, I, I like the guys that were able to go in and replace those guys, but we got to make sure those guys are healthy and, and we may miss some guys for a little bit of time. Ryan, with the, with the road, it seems like you guys have kind of struggled to kind of get your footing a little bit. I know it's a new season, but it's been something in the last few years where the road hasn't been kind of you guys. What do you think it is about just playing in these? road environments where you guys just aren't able to get the quick starts or the effective play you want. Yeah, uh, and that's, I, I do think that's one of those things that, you know, I know we had, talked about that last year, is, is it something I got to do differently? Um, but our guys have been as dialed in as focused as I've ever seen them. And I, and I mean that wholeheartedly. If, if our meetings this week were fantastic. Our, our walkthroughs, our practices, our guys were dialed in. Um, they 100% believed in the game plan. And, you know, and I think part of that was, you know, just being able to go out there and, and put it all together. And I don't know what it is. I wish I had an exact answer. Hey, why do we start slow on the road? Why is it like this um, for back-to-back -back years? Obviously, it is a different season with different personnel. So I've got to sit back and say, okay, is there something we can do differently? But, I mean, if, if anybody that saw the preparation leading up to tonight would say, wow, it was phenomenal. And obviously, we're, we're missing something there that, you know, how come it didn't happen on game day? Now, we, like we talked about earlier, right, drop passes some missed tackles, a uh, lack of their overall execution, are all part of that that recipe uh, that led to a um, not so great game. Do you think it's a mental thing where some things kind of just add up where you do prepare well, but if one mistake happens, it just kind of adds up and just kind of spills over? Yeah, not at all. I really don't believe that. I think we've got the right type of guys in the locker room that are, are mentally locked in, that are mentally tough, um, that realize it. And that part of that's the leadership that we have uh, by our players that go out there and say, okay, things are going to happen. We know that Mississippi State was going to have put together a drive at some point during the game and score. It just so happened to be that first drive. There was zero lost thoughts um, on the sideline that, okay, we can go back out there and stop them. And no differently. Offensively, it wasn't like, you know, during the, the lightning delays, there wasn't a single one player on offense saying, man, what, what's going on? It's, okay, how can we go out there and, and put together uh, better drives and sustain drives? And so. I don't think it's a mental block at all. I think it's just finding ways that we've got to do a better job, and, and that's my job as a head coach to figure that out. Ryan, I know you, you never make excuses, but how difficult was that delay? Because you come out, you warm up, you go back in, you come out, then you have to go right back in. How difficult was that processing with your team of, of, of trying to get back to playing football with all those interruptions? Yeah, Mike, it's, it's the nature of it. We understand um, that there's – different things that occur in college football. And that, that was it, you know, we knew, we even talked about it in training camp, at some point there's probably gonna be some type of weather delay. And, and sure enough, um, it happened tonight multiple times. And our guys kept dialed in and locked in the locker room. There wasn't a horse play, there was just, okay. Hey, whenever, you know, even 30 minutes, oh, no, 15 minutes later, another 30 minutes, our guys um, were ready whenever that whistle blew. And that's why I appreciate about them, is it just shows, um, their concentration, their focus, and their desire to go out there and, and perform at a high level. You knew how challenging these first two weeks were going to be from the moment the schedule came out, but when you lose the first one, how, how do you go into this week? What does that do to this week? Yeah, look, I mean, nobody uh, wants to, is going to put more pressure on themselves and, and, and what they, the expectations, the standards of our program are than myself. But the players also understand that. And that, that's what, like, I don't mean to keep harping on this. This is a unique squad because they believe and they, they really get it. And so we're going to quickly learn from this game. But the effort, the, the focus this week is going to be phenomenal. I just know it. And because of the, the two of the gentlemen that are sitting here in this room, they won't settle for anything other than that. And it, it makes my job easier because I know they, they're they right now itching to go ahead and let, let's go ahead and get the game playing ready for Navy. Um, we understand it's an important game because it's the next one, but it's conference play. And it's unusual for us to be able to uh, 
open up conference play on the road week two. And we know there's challenges of playing at uh, Annapolis, but uh, our guys will be hungry and ready, and even more so because this certainly left a bad taste in our mouth. And um, I, I, I understand our guys. I, I don't. There's no celebration. There's no happiness. There's no. It's how do we learn from this? How do we move forward? And how do we go out there next Saturday um, and learn from this mistakes and go out there and play at a higher level? Thank you, Ron. Thank you, guys.